My name is Oksana Ivanova, and I'm currently a product manager in an Estonian company, in an Estonian startup. But uh, I started my journey three and a half years ago in a Russian company, and uh, to be honest, I didn't even know that I was doing that. I didn't even know that I was doing the job. And uh, how I actually get in the product manager is, uh, a really interesting topic because I didn't plan that. I wasn't thinking of actually getting into business or anything like that because um, my background and my education is a BA in librarian science and library management. And uh, I wasn't thinking of doing anything related to business until one company in Russia, uh, we have several IT branches, IT uh, huge companies here in Russia, and one of them is Adines. It's kind of um, one of the most prominent here in Russia. Where we can apply it in the financial sector, in medicine, in education, everywhere. So I was just a consultant for one of these branches, and uh, it was even like a freelance-based work where I could just uh, come to the office and uh, talk to people working on the software for libraries and colleges because that was my background and this is where I spent all the time doing the stuff. I was involved in education and library uh, thing here. So the company invited me and asked me to, you know, like, and look into the problem with their software because it wasn't really popular at the moment for libraries and for they needed someone to consult about that. And uh, so that's how it just started. I was just consulting them on different uh, topics, how to adjust the user experience and what what kind of methodological mistakes that they made when they were doing this kind of, you know, uh, software, and um, one day they were just like, okay, since you know that much, you can actually start working with and things that you're, you know, been covering for us. And I agreed on that, and uh, I still didn't know that I was doing the job. I still didn't know that I was you know, uh, capable of doing that. I was just thinking that I'm consulting people on several problems that they have with their software. And eventually I uh, ended up doing, you know, uh, work of a product manager and a product owner and uh, a project manager and, you know, scrum master and all of this stuff I was, uh, um, I was, lost actually at the very beginning when I realized what a scale of work I have to do but uh, over time when I found uh, people that I had to work with when I realized that I have a team of people who can help me work on the project with developers with the designers with actually in the, at the very end, I guess, of the project, the company hired the product manager, a project manager, I'm sorry. And uh, this is where I realized that it's not like uh, I'm doing this work alone, but I'm actually taking part in a bigger process for the whole company. And I have people around me who do the same thing, who really want to have good software, and they really want to, you know, participate in everything that company does. So I guess that was the start, but I still didn't know about that. I still didn't know that I was doing the job till one day I uh, somebody just told me that, that this thing that I was doing, that's actually a product management thing. And I was quite surprised because I wouldn't really think of that. I wouldn't say that I can do that. I wouldn't be uh, even thinking of going into the field, as I said, but then I can see that I can do the job and uh, I can see that I'm kind of successful at that because we launched the software and we adjusted the platform that we had to 
or work with, we connected the libraries. As, that was our initial idea, to connect as many um, school libraries together as possible and to have uh, the platform for them to cooperate with each other. And we'll launch another uh, library software for collectors, for people who bibliophiles, you know, who like um, books and who like collecting them and exchanging them. And uh, that was a really exciting experience. And once I finished that, I realized that I need something more, that I want to, you know, uh, go for a next project and next project. And I, I want to see things developing and, you know, being different around me. So this is where I started my next uh, project in um, financial sector, actually. There was another uh, company that people, they were working here, I knew them, and they asked me to be, again, a consultant, and I guess that's how working as a product manager usually start. I didn't know that you can start differently. I started as a consultant, and uh, uh, I helped them with their uh, so far, they had accounting department and they had this kind of uh, management department where they have to unite their information together. So it was solely internal software in comparison with the B2B software that I was doing for libraries. And that was a whole new experience for me that was really uh, that was really new. I didn't know that it's possible to be an external product manager and internal product manager at the same time. So that was really cool. And after that, I decided that I would join a team of, uh, there is an Estonian company and uh, there are guys who kind of, you know, freelance camp company that are working on developing software for startups or for any company that needs this software for their different uh, tasks and needs. So, uh, so currently, that's kind of that's how it started. I started working on a contract, or, or even say freelance based, as a product manager for different projects and for different companies. And that was probably one of the most striking experience because this is where I realized that I was doing the actual job of product manager because before I didn't know about that. And uh, today, at the moment, we are starting another project with another Estonian um, company, Gamelize. We are working on uh, educational software at the moment. We're in the, in the development process and we're working on uh, psychological assessment of kids, so it's software for that. So at the moment it's, it's, really, it's really busy, but it's really exciting. And I, I, just two years ago, I wouldn't have said that I could do the job, you know, and now I understand that I can, and it's, it's getting more interesting day by day, I guess. Great, Oksana. Uh, this is actually pretty nice. Uh, uh, could you help us understand a little more around uh, how how are the challenges that that you face on a daily basis, and maybe share with our audience that how do you go about tackling with them? Yeah. Uh, well, probably one of the first challenges I would say you would face if you don't have technical background, and you would probably uh, really struggle with that when you're just starting out because you think that you have to be a tech person, you have to write codes, and you know you, you have to understand programmers and talk uh, to them uh, on their language. And although you have to talk to them so they would understand you, it's not really mandatory for you to have this kind of uh, technical background. You don't have to have a BS or a, I don't know MS in in any kind of technical fields. Although you work with software, but you also work with people around that software, and that's kind of the purpose of, of the thing that you are developing. You're addressing people, and after that, you're addressing the software. And this people-centered approach is what's the most important about product manager and actually product owner as well. So you have to focus on technical things, yeah, of course, but it's not like a rocket surgery, you know, you, you, you can look some things uh, up online or you can even ask 
developers of some yeah you can ask them stupid questions like what does it do and what's the thing about that and why do we have to do that but usually usually developers would ask you to explain them what exactly you need to do and what exactly you want to do and you have to explain that from the people center side you don't have to explain them how to code because they know how to code you have to explain them how to to you know, develop this feature and why you develop this feature in the first place, so it would be natural for people who use your software, you know, just not click on that and say, oh yeah, I don't know what's going on, I, I don't know what's what's happening. But it it should be like intuitive approach to that, and you have to, you know, know about that, and you have to understand that that's kind of the thing that you're doing. It's not technical thing that you're doing, although you're in a technical field. You're approaching this uh, from a different side. Uh, as I like uh, one, uh, Evan Kimball, if you've ever heard of him, he's a kind of cool entrepreneur from San Francisco. And he once said that if you're a product manager, you can't code your way out of the problem. So if you have some business related problem or if you have some product related problem, it's not uh, really important to know how to code. You have to know how to think differently from the different side of that. So, so yeah. Perfect, Oksana. So we have a lot of women uh, who come out to us in the academy, and they have a general query that uh, for the women uh, in the free uh, in in the PM domain. Uh, is it really difficult for them uh, to transit from the roles like business analyst or uh, designer or uh, marketing professional? I, I wouldn't say that it's dif difficult, you know. I would say that um, probably when you think uh, of yourself as, you know, I'm a business analyst, I'm a designer, or I'm uh, something else, you know, it will be difficult for you to transit to a different role because you, you are still thinking in the frames of the profession you're putting yourself in. In this case, I would say that use your, you know, current profession as your background. Say that, yes, I have experience in business analysis. I have experience in design. And I have a solid background, I, I don't know, whatever it is, can be, you are doing right now, maybe you are a UX designer, maybe you're a UE designer, who knows. So it doesn't really matter what kind of strength you're coming from. It's more important how you can start thinking like entrepreneur, in a sense, because you will have to think like that, especially if you want to work in a startup, for example, and if you want to have a corporate job, it's a bit different approach to product management. But still, if you're working, if you want to work for a startup, you have to uh, understand that there is no limit for your possibilities. Your title and your job related things that you've been doing for, for years doesn't restrain you from going, you know, broader and for uh, trying and performing different tasks that you would never try as a business analyst or designer or anything else. So I would say that probably the best case would be to try something uh, yourself, you know, to find the case that uh, with a product that you would like to uh, approach and try uh, thinking of that from the way of your strengths, for example, if you're a designer, how you can redesign this approach, but you have taken into account some of, you know, uh, do some research, think of what other people say about this software, what's wrong with that, for example, do you find uh, the same problems as other people say on the internet or something like that. So, so try to approach your profession and your approach to your work differently. I would say this one stop your transit that's for sure. Thanks, Oksana, for taking the question. Uh, I have received another question. Uh, it says, uh, can you recommend some of the platforms that uh, in a day-to-day -day basis uh, that you that a PM uses? Uh, as, as a some communities, some, some communities which the uh, product managers, global product managers uses. 
certain communities where they they interact among each other, share challenges, and uh, any of the communities that you are a fan of or which which you share your uh, queries at. Um, I wouldn't say that there is software that will help you transit from different roles to another. I would say it's just uh, the things that you need to know how to use, for example, as a product manager, is any sort of or roadmap uh, development, you know, roadmap construction software. So you can actually, uh, I, I use Mind Manager, for example. That's a really good thing for me because I started with that and it really helps me a lot to understand what kind of direction uh, the software is going, especially if it's kind of a big a corporate uh, software. It, it could be several of them, but for example, you're working on a particular one and you, you need to kind of connect all the dots of uh, marketing of IT of strategy of business or of everything that you are doing here and of sales of, of everything so you have to have a clear picture of what you are doing and any sort of software that you can use for visualizing your work your progress and you know your any sort of um, things that you are doing so you don't forget about them. You have to have this clear map of what you are doing. So that would be useful. Y you can also use any sort of simple software as, you know, Excel, Word, whatever is comfortable for you. I use uh, Trello sometimes, even for my personal tasks, even for my personal, you know, personal related uh, projects, I use some sort of project management software, for example, just to keep on stay on track and to keep with my tasks. It's not like it will help you to be a PM, but it will help you to work as a PM, I would say. Perfect. Uh, we have another question from the audience. Uh, Ankit Agrawal is asking, what kind of things should we practice in order to shift to a PM role? In general uh, practices, yeah. Uh, no, engineer practices. Well, it won't hurt you to know them. <laughs> but as I said before, you don't need to know them for just, you know, if you're saying that I can't be a PM just because I don't know some engineering stuff, that's not true. You can always learn this stuff if you really need this. Uh, I would say that for example, for me, it's um, valuable if you know how things work, rather if you know just about things. You know, for example, when you start working uh, on some sort of, uh, for example, I started working on uh, the software for a help app, and uh, there was, uh, I didn't know much about health industry, of course, I, I wasn't there, but I have the internet. I have people who know about this, uh, area you know I can always google that it's the same with engineering if you don't know how to explain to your uh, developers what you want to do just probably ask them in the first place and if you don't want to ask them try to figure out what kind of platform they're developing on for example or kind of what kind of code they use for 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 for, for their uh, software you you have to know that as a PM anyway so it won't hurt you at all so, uh, so uh, you can you can learn that the way you are doing things. That's a very good thing about being a PM. You don't have you have to be everywhere at the same time. You have to know marketing. You have to know tech. You have to know sales. You have to know business development. You have to know strategy development. And at the same time, you can, you know, catch up with all of these gaps that you have in your experience on the way of you are doing that, on the way of while you're working. When you understand that there is something that's difficult for you, just look it up, just uh, try to find, if you think that coding, for example, that thing that's coding, it's really difficult for you, and you know that the platform that you're working on is using, Java, for example, or C++, C++ is really difficult, but still, you can understand the basics. The basics of programming, it won't hurt you in any way. So if you understand that, that will be good. So 
I think it, it, it it's not necessary for, for you to translate to PM. I mean, if you don't have any tech experience, you shouldn't consider that you can translate. That, that's not true. You can, but you can learn on the way. Great. Uh, we have another question. Uh, so Somesh is asking, can you share some specifics on how a PM or a prospective PM build and own user research feedback skills for a product or a feature? How did you improve on this? So basically, uh, uh, Somesh is asking, how do you go about uh, building user research uh, for the product that you're building or uh, the kind of feedback that you want to generate from the market uh, while designing a feature? Can you do this, please? Yeah, I understand what you're talking about. Thanks for the question. That's a good one. It's dif different, actually, depending on whether you're working for a corporate uh, job or depending if you're a startup. For example, in a startup, you can be you know, a co-founder at the same time as being a product manager, for example, or uh, people in charge can tell you to you know, like, do some, some things like, like you were the owner of the company. In a startup, you are approaching uh, this kind of uh, user research and you know feedback completely differently. You usually use lean approach to that. You can always use lean approach in in big companies, but it's it it can be a bit different uh, because when you use lean approach, you can uh, test as many people as you can, and in your research, you just look for the most relevant ideas at the very moment that you have. You can, uh, you're trying to limit your ideas for, and you know, people you're researching for as, as, as many, as, as less as possible, you know, as fewer as possible. You're trying to, you know, think that whether you need this feature in the first place and you're just implementing this feature at the same time, you're just building an MVP for example, it, which can be just a simple Google form, which you can use for any sort of, you know, uh, poll or something like that. You can use anything for, for actually gathering this feedback. And when you uh, understand that this feedback, it's, it's, it, it, the, this feature doesn't really apply to this uh, software that you're doing right now, or this feature is not really uh, popular at the moment, so you can just drop it for, for, at the moment. It, it, and it's usually how it works in startups. Uh, in big companies, you usually approach uh, the software that it's already built and it's already working. And before actually creating any feature, you will have to have an extensive research actually about that. You will have to go online and find blogs, people, uh, and anything that you can find already online because this software has been uh, on the market for a while and people have feedback on that. So that's usually you are going on actually looking for info that you already have and you can gather from that's been on the market. With a startup it's differently. You're just building from the scratch and you're trying to build it as fast as possible just to get as much feedback as you can. So it's two, two different approaches, but you still can do. Perfect. Uh, so there's another question. Uh, Vishal is asking, uh, should product managers know about data science and machine learning concepts? Uh, it's in the same line as, as uh, should you have engineering knowledge or not? Um. Well, I wouldn't say, I'm not saying again that it's necessary. It's, it will help you a lot. If you have this knowledge and if you have this experience and if you're going to apply this in the fields that need machine learning or data science, you know, you will benefit that really uh, much more than um, PMs that uh, don't have this knowledge, for example. You can understand that there is a competitive market in here. And if you know something that others don't use that. so. You don't have to know that. For example, if you want to work in an educational field uh, as a PM, for example, as I was doing that. So you don't have to know something really exceptional 
in this case. You can know machine learning, of course it will help you, but it, it's, it's better to apply this sort of, you know, specific niche knowledge in the niche spheres. And you can benefit much more as a PM with this knowledge than uh, uh, in any other field. For example, if you want to use your technical experience, if you want to use your data science experience, use that in the fields that where, where this kind of uh, knowledge will benefit you, will help you, and will not be just, you know, uh, a luggage that you're carrying behind you. So, depending on the field. We can move on to the next question. Uh, this one is around uh, by Harshwadan. He asks, uh, which path should you follow uh, to start in the initial level? Uh, I'm not sure what the question is around. Harshwadan, could you uh, elaborate a little on the question? Meanwhile, I'll take another question. Uh, Ankit Agrawal is asking, uh, are you there? Uh, do you have any courses or books that you recommend uh, to read for people who are looking forward to transit to the course uh, or uh, the communities that they should follow uh, to benefit them uh, to transit to the road? Uh, honestly, I can say that since you're going to approach in the first place as a product manager, you have to know about business and you have to know about user experience in the first place. That's that that will be your, you know, uh, main uh, skills that you will need working as a product manager. Uh, so I would say that first book that you need to read it's Don't Make Me Think. It's about web usability, but it's it's not only about web usability. Uh, you know, in general, you can use these approaches that this book is uh, uncovering for, for you in any different field, in any software that you are making. It's not only about web, it's not also about uh, application, it's, it's, uh, it's about everything. And it's just about design, so you have to approach this kind of design field. I'm sure that you can find um, It'll, there is a special edition from Product School, a great community that you kind of want to follow as well on Facebook and I guess on Slack they have their personal channel. Uh, they have this kind of a really short and 16 course, on, not even course, there is a book of explaining you how to be a product manager and explain all the aspects and all the you know things that you may encounter and all the and tasks you will have to perform and there is a really good you probably can get that for free even there's about two two hundred pages but you, you can get it for free from product school and about communities that's a good thing because uh, usually it's about product communities on Slack, and uh, I know one that's mine. The product uh, they they have a personal Slack channel, and they have not only you know field related uh, channels, but they also have jobs posting. They have uh, a really friendly community of people sharing news and you know events happening in in, in in the product management field and the same way with the product school they also have the personal channel on, on slack you can join that for free and you'll be on top of the news about product management uh, I guess in North America mostly but also in Europe and around the world as well so there's another question uh, by Vishal Singh. He is asking, is it good to transition from business analyst role to product management rather than uh, straight away jumping to product management in the initial stage? So I guess his question is around uh, if, if someone is uh, from uh, some other field and they're looking forward to uh, finally end into product management role, should they be taking a route via uh, transiting from business analyst role and then coming to product management or directly should be jumping? Is it basically helpful to have a BA or not? Okay, um, what I'm thinking is uh, it depends actually on you as a person. If you think that it's better for you to start with business analysis and you will feel better and more confident after you worked 
for, for, for a year, for example, in business analysis, and you say that I have this knowledge and experience, and now I can transition to product management, you can do that. Definitely go for that because it's, that will be good for you. If you think that, if, if, if you hesitant, you know, I would say just try uh, getting into product management from the first place because uh, you may regret spending this year on tasks that are not related to uh, entirely to product management because that's kind of the field where you can't be prepared for entering. It's, uh, you really have to be everything for everyone, I guess, in the very beginning. And once you're getting into the, the, this field, you start learning about business analysis, sales, marketing, everything, you know. That's, there is no really, you know, like a special entrance with gates, you know, where you can enter for product managers only. You start from different backgrounds, from different fields, and, you know, if you're willing to take this risk, go for it and you know you'll benefit from just you know j jumping into it because uh, that's that gives you more possibilities to explore and challenge yourself so that, that that's a really good thing because if you can't challenge yourself and if you can't and if you don't want to learn new things on the way and if you don't want to catch up with new trends all the time there's probably you should probably take a safe way of getting into business now and then trying to go into PM. Wow, uh, that's really inspirational. Uh, so I guess on the same note, we have another question, but this time this one is around how to crack the PM interviews. I'm sure you must have gone through the process as well. Uh, I guess Shiva wants to know, as well as Ankit wants to know, that uh, how do you go about cracking the PM interviews? Uh, well, how long does it take? What kind of repression do you need? Uh, could you take this one, please? Yeah, of course. It, it actually, it, it's not only about PM interviews, it any, it's about any interviews you're going to have as any person you want to work for, you know? You have to uh, look up the company on the internet and especially look through their website. And if you really want to stand out, for example, product manager and they have some sort of website and they have some sort of products that they're presenting or they have a demo for that, you can say that I actually look through your website and I found this, this and this and I think that it can be improved this way and this way and I think that this kind of uh, software that you're working on can be, you know, be better in this way and this way because I think that, you know, X, Y, Z. You know, you, you, you shouldn't say that from the very beginning, of course, when you just enter the, the, the room and you're saying, I, I know that your website is awful and I can fix it. But you can say that when, you, when people ask you, what do you know about our company? Or what do you know about our you know, uh, software? What do you know what we're doing? And, and what are we about? So HRs, they do really like asking something like this. And you, you can show that you were really interested in this kind of question and you researched the field before actually entering uh, the doors so in, in this case this and also uh, I even have an, um, uh, a blog post about that that you have to talk about your projects as if there are uh, there is something some events that happened to you as if you are telling a story about uh, something that happened to you in the past, you can add some personalities, you can add people that you are working with, and especially you can add some uh, uh, situations that were difficult for you and challenging, and uh, tell people how you overcame them, how you managed to do something. But also, I, I, I also recommend saying something that you failed at, because it's not really a bad thing. When you're saying that you, you, you weren't successful with some sort of product or project, it's perfectly fine. We are humans. We can be not really successful sometimes. And saying about that makes you, you know, not just an employer, but a human being, you know. And people really get, uh, you know, not really attached to you, but they understand that you're just the same person as they are and they, you know, become kinder usually and they see you differently as an honest and you know person who can say things that nobody would expect 
Wow. Uh, one should first have domain knowledge and build on that domain knowledge and then start to think more from a user perspective. What are the other skills one should target? You're talking about skills you need for tackling your problem as, as a product manager, as, as, as I can understand, right? Yes, that is the question. <laughs> You're talking about skills that you have to need for, you know, user experience. It's not really a skill, it's kind of a mindset. And I would say that, first of all, for being a product manager, you have to have a special mindset for thinking from user experience side, you know, from being a user. But at the same time, you have to think of business that you're going to you know, promote and the business you're going to work for. So in skills, there is no such thing that, you know, set of skills that you need to have for being a product manager. For different roles, you would need different set of skills and there is no restrictions for you to obtain any and say, for example, I'm not going to learn coding because I don't need this in product management. You will need to know things about coding. It's not really uh, that you need to learn C++, for example, or uh, something like, you know, Python. The, the, there is no way you can say that from the very beginning where you're just entering the field. You can say what exactly you will need. But you can understand what you may potentially need to have in your work when you understand the field you want to work in and understand the range of companies you want to work in. Because it can be small company, it can be startup, it can be enterprise, it can be... Uh, a really big company and depending on that you will have to adjust your skills and knowledge uh, to the different scales and to the different you know areas of your expertise it, it depends on your field and it depends on the company you are choosing to work for so there is no you know there is set of skills that will definitely land you PM job and there is no such thing I'm sorry <laughs> so there's another question by Vishal in big organizations, we won't get to build product from scratch. Instead, focus is more on feature what product from scratch. How to tackle this question? Hmm. Just a moment. Can you read the question again? I'm sorry. So in, uh, in big organizations, we won't get to build product from scratch. And focus is more on feature enhancements. Uh, but in interviews, we are always asked, what products have you built from scratch? How to tackle this question? Well, if you never build anything from scratch, I guess, yeah, that, that's the question. Uh, that's that's perfectly fine. You can just think of a product you would build from scratch. There is nothing that restricts you here. You know, you can think of of your own uh, product, something that you would spot, for example, somewhere. I don't know, anywhere. So, uh, when you spot a problem with some sort of uh, field or area or anything like that you can actually think of what kind of product you would build yourself. And uh, you don't have to build that, of course, but you can have some sort of ideas. You can uh, explain how you would do that. And uh, I, 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 I think that's, that's not that bad that you didn't build anything from scratch and you haven't built anything from scratch. But your willingness to do that, it's really important. And, uh, y you know, people, they uh, respect honesty. And if you say that you haven't built anything from scratch, that's perfectly fine. If you're just working on features, that's also okay. It doesn't make you less product management or bigger product management manager. You know, that's, that there is no difference in that. You're still approaching the software and you're still working on, you know, users' needs. There is no difference from here. Yeah, there is a difference why you start working on a particular product or feature, but that, that doesn't make you worse or better, you know, if that was the question, as I understand it. Yes, uh, 
another question is there. Uh, Shiva had asked this question earlier, uh, which is kind of a continuation to last question. Uh, he's asking, are there any projects that I can decide that can make my application stronger, like building a small website or an app that will help me? And you don't have to build anything, and you don't have to create anything. It's enough that you have idea, you have your thoughts about this idea, and it's enough if you can, you know, build a narrative about this idea and about this problem that you are trying to solve. You don't have to have a working website, for example, for for that, or you don't have to have a working product for that. If you just spotted something, if you just something realized that there is something is wrong with, I don't know keynotes or I don't know with word or or anything or uh, you can always improve that on your own you can always just have a prototype just your hand drone you know UX experience prototype that's perfectly fine uh, you don't have to create anything you don't have to build anything you, because you're kind of you're not a developer and you're you're not a designer. Although you have to connect these dots together, you are not the person who actually, you know, deploys something, who actually releases the product, who is actually working on on the aspects of actually this product working in a sense of, you know, implementation. So y y you can, you know, y if you like that, you can fill your portfolio with tons of cases that you solved or created yourself. That's that's really good, and it's really uh, that's what would you know, I guess uh, HR managers look for if you kind of came up with an idea yourself and sold it because it's it's it's, it's really difficult. Ashwarjan is asking another question, uh, which is around: uh, Are there any certain product management related certifications or courses which are uh, pretty much valued into uh, the market by the companies? Any certifications that you would like to recommend, like? Uh, uh. I'm afraid that there is no certain certifications right now at the moment. Probably, as Phil develops, we will have something else like that. At the moment, what will make you like you know stronger in your skills and in in your probably you know. Conf that will build your confidence. You can have some uh, project management certificates that will help you a lot. It, it's not like you have to be a project manager, but the skill of managing projects is, is really helpful as, as a product manager. What would be the best for a product manager is not really um, the certificates, because, well, I can print any certificates I want. What's more important about them is kind of portfolio, because even though it's kind of business-related build, it's uh, it's more like, um, you're, just imagine you're applying for a design position. Would you need certificates of, uh, you know, accomplishing some sort of, you know, art school or something like that? Yeah, you would. But if you have a really lousy portfolio, mm, your certificates won't help you. What you have to have is a really great portfolio with your made-up, uh, you know, cases or with the cases that you really had uh, in in your experience. But that's what valued by HRs. I'm I'm sure for that. Not certificates or courses. That's for sure. Ashwin, sure does this uh, answer the query? Like uh, what she means to say that uh, because the PM as a domain is really new in the industry. It's been like around three to four years only but uh, like project management we do not have any established uh, uh, universal uh, courses or certifications which are accepted in the industry but of course uh, there are many schools like us which are coming out and are uh, uh, helping create an ecosystem and which which industry is uh, respond to and is pretty much open and acceptable and uh, benchmarking the space uh, so yes uh, that should answer the question uh, Mansi, your question was answered, I guess. Uh, uh, Mansi has asked another question. Uh, I guess she has joined late. She wanted to know uh, how uh, could you quickly brief her about your breakthrough into the PM role uh, how for the people who joined? Yeah, yeah. Accidentally, I, I, and I honestly recommend people who you know want to transition to PM roles. 
come through there accidentally because this is where you actually start feeling the, the, the you know the crisp of, of the profession and for the first thing what, what I realized after a while you don't have to be afraid of taking on responsibilities don't be afraid if you are thinking that something is wrong and something you want to improve do that say go to the CEO and say I want to help with that that and that can I do that or if it's a, a startup, go to the partners and guys working here and say, I want to do this, this, and this. Don't be afraid to take responsibilities. And this is the best way to get into product management, especially if there is no established, you know, uh, uh, there is no established uh, department for, 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 for that, or there, there weren't product managers before. So you would be the first one, and that would be a great asset for you. You will be, you know, the one who people will remember. So this is the best way. Don't be afraid to do things that you're kind of interested in, you're inspired, and even though you don't know how to do them, you always can learn them. So don't be afraid to learn and don't be afraid to do something you don't know. I guess uh, that would be, we have covered a lot many questions. Is there any ending note that you would like to uh, share with the audience and encourage them how to transit? Are, are there any final words that you would like to say, please? Well, I wanted to say that if you want to transit to product management, do that. Because this is a really great developing and, you know, field where you can show off your best skills, your best side of you as a professional and as a human being. Since it's not established or developed at the moment and it doesn't have any, uh, you know, huge institutions behind that, that's a very nice field that you can mold according to your personality and according to the things you want to do. If you aspire to do something, if you aspire to make changes, if you are aspired to, you know, if you're thinking that I'm not satisfied with me being just a designer, I want to be a product manager, of course, do that. You can always come back to being just a designer. That, that's perfectly fine, but you would definitely regret not trying being a product manager because that was really a cool opportunity. You could, you know, do much more than a designer. And you can always have this say. Uh, option with you. There is no way you can fail. Y you may d do not like, for example, uh, what, 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 what you, 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 for example, if you decide to be product manager and you just don't like that, that's perfectly fine. You can come back to the field you came from. So don't be afraid. That's that's all yours. Thank you, Oksana. Uh, it was really wonderful to have you here. Uh, I guess uh, we can call this session as an end if there are no questions. Any questions? Last minute questions? Yeah. Is there any exciting thing about product management you want to share? Oh, yeah, that, that's everything. That's the whole profession. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that's an excitement, it's especially if you decide to work for a startup, and especially for not a uh, well established startup. It's every day you wake up with new ideas or new people you have to research, or new uh, feature you have to think of, or new. You know, software you decide your partner suddenly decided to, you know, come up with. That's that's everywhere. It, it's it's it may be a bit daunting when you have to work with, you know, uh, statistics and uh, with metrics and when you have to, you know, measure things. But when it's just in the process of development and in, in the, the process of working on something, not just, you know, maintaining that, that's a really exciting part of that. And when you start something, it's always exciting. We know that's from you know, from the childhood. When we start something new, we love that. That's the best thing about product managers. Uh, what is the tech market in Russia as compared to India and other cities? There is, there is a big difference with the Russian market and the European market and North American market. There are kind of completely different approaches because I would say that in Russia, this kind of product management approach, it's just in a stage of, you know, being just at the very beginning of development, you know, people don't really understand what product managers do 
and sometimes you can see that people hire and call a person product manager who does lots of th things as I started, for example, like product owner, scrum master, project manager, and, and everything at the same time. So I think there are the big difference in here, for example, in Russia, they don't really understand it yet, what's kind of the role it's supposed to be and it's a bit different on on, on, on on the West I'm not sure about India I, I don't know sorry uh, uh, there are more startups coming up in Russia or there are corporates or what kind of job market is there no there is not a really good environment for startups unfortunately in Russia that's why I'm working with Estonian colleagues because that's that's that, that that's easier for 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 me for example to work in a startup in Europe than in Russia because in Russia it's usually like a corporate job and you you have to work on already established uh, projects and something that's been working for for years since I started so, yeah, if you want to have a startup and you want to, you know, people who are in the process of development, that's usually to the best. In Russia, it's not really, it's not really startup friendly yet. Maybe it will be different in a few years. I don't know. Great. And Vishal is asking, like, is any idea on few best project management tools? You mentioned Trello earlier. Like, uh, you would like to suggest him some tools to start with? Uh, I would suggest using anything that will help you visualize and understand what you're doing. Since it's a really new field and not really uh, established and, you know, people don't really understand what you're doing exactly, you may be misled with them saying that you have to do this, this, and this. So you have to have for yourself a very good idea of what you're doing and what you're, you know, capable of. So I would say using any software that you can track your performance and your tasks because it's really important. Because if you're going to go broader, it will really hurt you because you have to stay on the track of being, you know, a user-centered person. But you have to, you know, a bit branch out, but not really far. Otherwise, you will just go into just business development or just in the design or something like that. You have to have this balance of understanding that you're uh, a, a, different, uh, a different entity, I would say, as a product manager. You are not related to any of the departments you are working with. And you have to understand that and you have to remind yourself all the time about that. Otherwise, it's kind of difficult. But any sort of software that can help you do that, that works. Great. So any ending, ending advice you would like to give to the audience? Like how to step into product management or how to make great career in product management? Uh, how to step into product management if you want to and if you think and if you're considering that, that go for it. And if you want to succeed, don't be afraid or scared to learn and don't be afraid to fail and don't be afraid to be wrong and don't be afraid to take up new things and learn new things and don't be afraid of anything that you may, you know, do wrong because although you can do many things wrong, it may cost your company lots of money, but still there is no other place you can learn how to do business and, you know, how to do this kind of job except, you know, doing this actually. So, yeah, I would say go for it. If you want to, 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 to transit, definitely go for it. That, that's really fun. Great. Uh, I think that's all for today and uh, we have gone more than an hour for the session so let's close the session and thanks a lot for coming and joining us okay yeah thank you very much for having me that was nice that was a pleasure yeah.